Tonight's call is actually inspired by an Ask Dr. Bartimus. Uh, one of my patients recently sent me an email and said that they're so happy with how well that their GI system is doing that they don't want to mess it up. But in a couple months, they have a colonoscopy scheduled and they're worried about the colonoscopy prep negatively impacting their gut microbiome and GI function. So they wondered what they could do about it. And so I had um, figured, well, let's dive into the literature and see what it says. And does colonoscopy prep negatively impact, impact the gut microbiome? So that's today's topic. And we've got a couple different studies to look at. This one's from 2013 titled The Impact of Colonoscopy Bowel Prep on Intestinal Microbiota. And this study looked at 15 subjects who were going to have a colonoscopy and drink the preparation. And they compared them to um, five subjects who did not do the colonoscopy. So they had five healthy subjects compared their microbiomes to 15 people who did the colonoscopy prep. And what they did is they looked at stool samples one month before the prep, one week before, and then one week, one month, and three to six months after the colonoscopy. And, and they wanted to compare the, well, look at and compare the microbiomes of each stool sample and see does the preparation and the procedure impact the microbiome. And what this study found was that the bowel prep does not have a lasting effect on the composition of the intestinal microbiota for the majority of subjects. So it does have a short-term effect, but not a lasting effect, was the conclusion of this study. If we jump forward to 20, a 2016 study, this one's called Persisting Changes of Intestinal Microbiota After Bowel Lavage and Colonoscopy. And this study, again, looked at colonoscopy um, patients and that went through the prep and they were wanting to see does the prep impact microbiota and what they found was one month after there was persistent changes in the microbiome specifically um, of a reduction of lactobacillus species or lactobacilli and lactobacilli if you've ever taken a probiotic and you look at the back label, you notice there's oftentimes a bunch of lactobacillus species listed and a bunch of bifidobacterium species listed. Lactobacillus species are very common and beneficial in many ways for us. Uh, they impact our metabolic health, they impact our immune health, they impact our colon health. So this study found that changes of the microbiome specifically significant reductions in lactobacilli were persistent up to one month after the procedure. So that is uh, potentially negative. I mean, it is negative to lose the, the beneficial species that we need and for them to be persistently lost. So we need to replace those if that's going to be a trend. The last study we'll look at is from 2019 called Effects of Bowel Preparation on the Human Gut Microbiome and Metabolome. What's a metabolome? A metabolome is a fancy word for all the metabolites that the microbiota produce in your gut. So this study looked not only at changes in the actual microbe numbers, but also the, the metabolites that the microbes produce because the microbes have an impact via their absolute number, but also through the me metabolites they produce, uh, they could positively or negatively impact our GI tract. So first sentence, large bowel preparation may cause substantial change in the gut microbiota and metabolites. These authors looked at controls who didn't undergo the prep bowel prep and compared them to people who did undergo the bowel prep. And what they found was compared to controls, the microbiota composition was significantly reduced immediately after the prep was taken, but not after 14 days. So by day 14, the change in the microbiome had recovered. Uh, from a metabolome standpoint, 
32 metabolites were significantly changed before and immediately after the PrEP, but these recovered within 14 days as well. So the authors concluded that bowel preparation has a profound effect on the gut microbiome and metabolome in the short term, but the overall composition recovers to baseline within 14 days. And so they finish by saying, to properly conduct studies of human gut microbiome and metabolome, fecal sampling should be avoided immediately after bowel prep. So that's more for me than for you guys, but if you're working with another doctor, you know, that sentence basically says collecting a stool within 14 days after a bowel prep isn't going to show you accurate information. So wait at least 14 days post colonoscopy before collecting a stool test that you want to be used for any sort of interpretation of your gut health. So this is the most recent study. This one says it does change it short term, but by 14 days it rebounds. So we've got a, 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 a little bit of um, disagreement in the literature, which is healthy, you know, because that will hopefully spur future research and more research to figure out, well, which is correct. Um, you know, this study says it does change it, but it's better in 14 days. The first study said it, the first study showed that it does change it, but it's, it's, it's better, you know, in a month or so. And then the third study showed it did change it and those changes persisted a month out. So it's probably individualized like most things. And so um, perhaps the study that showed persistent changes was looking at unhealthier subjects than these other studies. Of course, all of these studies who look at quote unquote healthy subjects, those are really just asymptomatic subjects. They're not necessarily healthy as we would define health. So the take home is if, in my mind, if you're gonna have a colonoscopy and do the bowel prep, well then I, I would say, make sure you're taking probiotics leading up to it. And then after you, you drink the prep and have the, the clean out for the procedure, you know, come home and get back on probiotics as soon as you can, eat sufficient fibers, uh, eat the rainbow as soon as you can, because we want to reestablish the healthy microbiome as soon as possible. So the, the probiotics help you seed it, the fibers help you feed it, because the fibers are the prebiotics for the probiotics. So get the probiotics in as soon as you can post-procedure and continue to feed them with the fibers and Hopefully you are one of the people in the studies that bounces back quickly and it doesn't have a long-term effect.